So, uh, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Jason Corella, and I'm an attorney down here in Miami, Florida. Um, I was a 2002 graduate of the University of Miami School of Law. Um, actually, a triple cane for those of you who are uh, Miami fans. I, I did a dual MBA JD, and I also have a bachelor's of business from Miami. Um, I live in Miami, so I obviously like it down here. Um, I uh, after finishing law school, I did a clerkship for a federal judge down here in the Southern District of Florida by the name of Paul C. Huck. Um, and that was an amazing experience where I basically assisted the judge with trials and helped him to write opinions um, and otherwise saw the way that the law was practiced from the judge's perspective, which I think is invaluable. Um, when I finished law school, I joined a boutique law firm called Jordan Burt that's based in Washington, D.C. and has an office down here in Miami, uh, where I worked for the first 12 years of my career before uh, the firm merged into a what we call a big law firm. Uh, Carlton Fields had about 350 lawyers. Uh, my prior firm maxed out at about 70. So I moved up into sort of a, a different level of law firm. It's over 100 years old. It's based in Tampa, Florida. And... Um, you know, we went from practicing all in the same area of law to a firm that had, you know, offices all over the country and, and practiced in lots of different areas. So that was an interesting experience. Uh, about, I want to say, four, five months ago, I had the opportunity to um, leave uh, Carleton Fields and um, join the team at Academica. And I am now uh, working with Academica Virtual. Uh, doing a little bit of in-house legal work and also helping with um, operations and development work that the company is doing. And I also um, am working with a very interesting legal technology startup. Um, I'm, I have this tendency to talk a lot because I'm a lawyer, but I'll just add one final thing. Um, in the last six or seven years, I've been doing... Um, work in what I call legal technology and innovation, including chairing my prior firm's legal technology and innovation task force, um, where we're developing interesting um, products and services that are a mixture of sort of law and technology. And so I could talk a little bit about that also if folks were interested. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll get into that in, in, in a second. Can you talk to the kids a little bit? Because um, I already got some questions from some students. So I'll ask some of my questions as well as some of the kids' questions. But um, they want to know what kind of things uh, did you study when you were like in high school and kind of figuring out? And did you always want to be an attorney? Um, according to my parents, I always wanted to be an attorney. I, I didn't realize that. Um, until I got into college and then decided to proceed to law school. But um, uh, I was very interested in in issues of, of history, world history, U.S. history, philosophy. I think um, a lot of things that are like that are, you know, adapt well to the law because it's a lot of reading things and then applying, you know, what happened in the past to what's happening in your case. So that is very helpful. I wish when I was in high school that I had taken uh, more opportunities to get involved in things like mock trial and debate, um, you know, looking for every opportunity for public speaking. I think that is such a big part of what lawyers do, uh, oral advocacy. And um, I think people should seize on, on every opportunity they can to do that especially if it makes you uncomfortable. Um, I find, you know, if it's a good thing and it makes you uncomfortable, you, you should push toward it uh, while you're young and the risk is very low. That is actually a common thing that we hear from a lot of successful guest speakers. Um, so I, apparently you guys are all reading the same book. <laughs> so, uh, are there any, someone wanted to know, are there any particular law schools that, um, stand out like if or is it like so say because we know that there's different tiers can you kind of explain that um yeah so there's lots of flaws with the methodology 
that we use to evaluate law schools, but the accepted standard is something called the US News and World Report rankings. Um, and it ranks uh, schools into tiers, kind of the top 50 and then the, the second 50 and then everybody else. Um, but what's generally regarded as the elite law schools are called the top 14. And they're the ones you would expect, um, Harvard and Yale and Stanford and um, University of Virginia, University of Michigan, um, the, you know, NYU, Columbia. Um, you can't go wrong going to those schools. But I find that choosing to go to law school in the community that you believe you're going to practice in has a, a different value calculation. You know, while I was in law school, I was interning with federal judges. I was working at, at a top law firm in town. I was building and expanding my network locally, and it has set me up for my entire career. Um, I work, uh, I'm a visiting scholar at the University of Miami School of Law now, and I just completed a term as a president of the Alumni Association. And um, I can tell you that the, the connections that I made in law school um, have made all of the difference in my career. And when I speak to and lecture uh, to law students, I tell them, you know, treat year one in law school as year one in your practice, because this is the time when you're going to, you know, make connections and make decisions that is going to define your career going forward. So there's sort of two schools of, of thought on that. We have an awesome question from uh, one of the students, Michaela. I will unmute you. You should be able to talk. Hello. Um, are there any cases you've done in your early career that you wished went differently now? <laughs> I only like to talk about the ones that went really well. Um, uh, there is nothing like the rush of uh, litigation. You know, people look at me and they say, well, you know, you've got this MBA and you've got business background, you know, why aren't you doing transactional work? And for me, it's standing up in the courtroom and making an argument and being, you know, there with, uh, you know, in a live experience. Um, they're just, you can't beat the rush. So um, every moment, you know, preparation is everything, you know, you prepare and you perform, but um, there are lots of times when I, I felt like I zigged when I should have zagged and things like that. As long as you put the work in and you understand the issues and you're prepared, you sort of have to accept that a lot of it is out of your hands. You know, the, um, you know, you make the argument, the judge or the jury has to decide and, and you live with that. Um, as far as the specifics of a case that I had wished uh, gone another way, I mean, sure, there are lots of them. Um, I had a case where, um, you know, we had set up for a particular judge the entire time. You know, we knew who the judge was going to be. I had actually worked um, as an intern when I was in law school for the judge. So I felt like I really knew, you know, how he operates. And so the entire strategy was geared toward that judge trying the case. And two things happened that were unbelievable. One, our star witness, who was in the prime of his life, healthy, 40 years old, dropped dead, you know, before trial. And that was horrible. And the other thing was at the last minute, the judge recused himself and the judge that replaced him was completely the opposite. So there was, you know, the, the result was skewed because the things that we had assumed going in ended up differently. And now um, I think what I learned from that experience is that you have to kind of expect the unexpected and make sure that you plan for it. So, um, Oh, one, one of our teachers, he wanted to know if you're involved with any clubs, uh, it, the academic schools that have to do with law or are planning on creating um, a law program that involves students at our academic schools. Well, that, that's an excellent question. Um, that is what I'm here for, actually. Uh, I came onto Academica in part to uh, build out um, specifically uh, career themed courses and uh, CTE certification arrangements for uh, different professional career pathways. And one of them is law. And so we're very, very excited about what we're building for um, students who are interested in a career in law or legal support. 
um, that is coming in the next uh, six to 18 months, so stay tuned. If you're a teacher uh, and you're interested in getting involved in this, uh, it's jcarella at academica.org, uh, or you can find me, Jason Carella, on LinkedIn or whatever and, and connect with me. Um, here's what we are putting into the pipeline right now. Uh, one is uh, we're developing a series of certifications related to digital legal support that includes, um, you know, how students could get careers right out of high school where they could make forty to fifty thousand dollars a year, uh, providing support in in um, in courtroom situations like trial presentation uh, and or to assist in virtual depositions and things like that. We're utilizing that same technology to uh, prepare students for um, digital oral advocacy exhibitions and competitions, including an online mock trial environment. And so I'm very interested if you've got a mock trial team and you're interested in getting involved in that, uh, please reach out to me and, and we can talk about it. Um, and then, uh, so we're really looking forward to that. And then in partnership with the Rao College, uh, we are creating what we're calling a center for excellence in digital legal. And what we would like to do is um, have that be um, kind of a, a super organization that clubs at different schools can collaborate together through so that the teachers uh, can talk to other teachers so that people who are bringing programs up can have the support of people who are more experienced. Um, and uh, so that students can have the opportunity to engage in some dual enrollment um, coursework that, that's in the legal profession. So I'm really, really excited about that. And I will uh, talk anyone's ear off who's interested in learning more about it. Well, one thing that uh, I think that is so unique about you is that you push the envelope as far as melding the technology that's out there and the need in your profession. So with that, would you be able to show uh, some of the kids that you've been working, what you've been working on with uh, deposition and talk to text kind of technology? Yeah, absolutely. So I had the uh, uh, great privilege um, to work with a new legal technology startup called Prevail. Um, and Prevail has a, what we're calling a testimony management tool. It allows you to, um, conduct depositions and other legal proceedings in a Zoom-like environment that we're in right now, except in addition to just being able to see everybody else and have them see you, uh, the, the platform records the witness and takes down everything that people in the conference say, uh, attributing the who's talking to who's talking, and also allows you to, um, to manage exhibits. I will show you just really briefly what it looks like because I'm really proud of it. Um, so this is Prevail. Um, I hope everyone can see it okay. When I flipped over there, I lost <laughs> my view of everybody else. No, we but, can see it. Okay, great. So the um, if there were more people in the conference, they would be populated there. There's no witness right now. And that's why it's indicating that it's not connected, but I'm just gonna turn it on very quickly so you can see. So as I'm talking, it's taking down what I'm saying and it's creating a transcript in real time by them. Uh, what that means for everyone is that the lawyers who are participating in the deposition can see the testimony on a transcript as it's happening. They can also tag the testimony um, and annotate it and bookmark it and create video clips out of it. And in addition to that, um, you have the ability to present exhibits. Um, this exhibit was already pre-stamped, but as you can see, I can move the stamp around. Um, I can give it a different name or number. I can search it. Um, it's just a very cool um, setup. So, uh, the founders at Prevail have been willing to allow access to this platform to students who are interested in practicing, practicing depositions. And uh, they're in the process of, hold on, it's still transcribing, we have to turn it off. Oh. So 
There we go. Um, and I'm going to close it because it's probably borrowing bandwidth from my Zoom call. Um, we're very excited about you know the prospect of doing things like um, online uh, mock trials and things like that using that platform and other technologies. So um, what I really like is that lawyers and people who are interested in the career in the law um, are often very creative. They have to be to make good arguments um, and they're very smart. And so part of what is great about legal innovation is you're collecting that, taking that combined intellectual ability and you're steering it towards solving specific problems. And you can pull in people from other careers and other disciplines to help in solving those problems. And I think that's very, very exciting. So I know that we're nearing the, the end of the time that um, we wanted to talk to you because I know that you have, obviously, are you billing by the hour or is it every 10th? Like, how is that? <laughs> well, uh, uh, luckily, back in September, I was fortunate enough to, to get off of that after almost two decades. So um, uh, I, am, uh, I am on a salary, if you will, now. And so uh, good. I'm glad. A lot less paperwork for you. Can you, uh, before we let you go, can you uh, give the kids any advice as they kind of go off into the world and discover what they want to do, whether it be in law or whether you want it to be, uh, or whether they want to do, you know, be a doctor or be a teacher or, you know, a professional basketball player? What kind of advice would you give to them as far as, um, you know, discovering what they want to do? Absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to recommend a book. Uh, it is called The Lean Startup Methodology. Um, this is a book that entrepreneurs use where um, when they're trying to do something, it's how do I um, create an environment where the risk of, um, you know, the, the negative effect of failure is as low as I possibly can get it and then try things until I succeed. We're taught in school or we come to the belief that failure is a bad thing, that we should um, always be right. And, and my feeling is if you're succeeding all the time, then you're not trying things that are difficult enough to, to be worthy of your talents. So the way that uh, the Lean Startup works is, um, you know, when you look at things like Facebook or, or Apple, you know, these are, kids that are in college or they're uh, two people uh, working out of a garage, right? They, they have very low overhead. They can try and fail as much as they want. And the cost of failure is almost nothing, but look at what success means. I mean, look how, what the market capitalization is right now of Apple or, or Microsoft or, or Facebook, right? So all you have to do is get it right once. And the value of getting it right is astronomical. So, um, and then you build that safe space to experiment in and you just keep trying. And the way I look at high school is that high school is the ultimate incubator, right? You, you're living with your parents, so you have no rent, right? Um, you have uh, teachers and a support network and uh, people who are invested in your success. So um, this is a safe space and environment to, um, to try things out and then just go out into the world and, and try to do things, learn as much as you can, um, set things up. You know, we don't just write a first draft in English class or whatever and turn it in, right? You, you, you outline it, you think about it, you talk to people, you write it, you rewrite it. All of those are failures until you get to the final version, but it's only through that experimenting, that testing and, and failing and adjusting and testing again, that you get to something that's really truly great. So my advice to you all, you can do whatever you want in your life. You don't have to decide right now what you're going to do, but experience things and take chances and good chances and, uh, and learn and, and definitely lean on your, your very experienced teachers and, and look for mentors that can help uh, to de define where, where you go.